What kind of gaming PC can you build for 500 US dollars? When it comes to the used market, the sky is the limit and if you can catch the right deals at the right time, you can end up with a pretty amazing computer, but if you wanna buy new, that is fine too. Today I'm building a computer with mostly new parts, the only used one being the GPU, but if I wanted to get a new GPU instead, it would have been an RX 6600. Now obviously the prices will differ based on where you live, but I wanna show you guys what I managed to build for $500. By the way, I already tested the CPU on the motherboard ahead of time because there was a chance that the motherboard might have had an older BIOS on it, in which case it wasn't going to work with our CPU, but it did so we're good. Speaking of which, why don't we start with those two components. This is an B55 MHP from BIOSTAR. It's the cheapest B450 motherboard that I could find, but it's honestly more than enough for our CPU and it not only runs this Ryzen 5 5500 at its rated clock speeds, but it's also able to provide it with extra power and allow it to run at 4.35GHz instead of advertised 4.2. On top of that, we're able to maintain 4.3GHz in Cinebench R23 on all cores. Which is insane considering that this motherboard is probably the cheapest and the weakest B450 you can find. This is what I mean, most people would go for the brands that are well known and popular on the market, but I really wanna show you guys that bottom of the barrel hardware isn't always as bad as most people make it out to be, in fact they are even a bit better than some of the more expensive ones. I'll show you guys the benchmarking results a bit later, but first let's finish building the computer. Like I said, we are using a Ryzen 5 5500 in here. As for the cooler, I went for this Snowfan ZQ01, but you can honestly cool this CPU with any cooler because it's honestly not that hot. Even this stock cooler would be fine. When it comes to RAM for AM4 systems, I generally recommend getting a 3200MHz kit or better because AMD CPUs really like high memory frequency. As for the timings, ideally you wanna aim for CL16 if the frequency is 3200, but I'm out of CL16 RAM sticks at the moment, so before the new ones arrive, I really wanna finish building this system, so we're gonna use these basic ones as stand-ins for now. In the pictures you will already see the ones that I was aiming to use. For the storage, I chose this 1TB SATA SSD from X-Ray Disk. It's a really good budget SSD that I've been using for many years now. I've probably built more than 50 systems with these SSDs alone, and I think they are quite reliable. To power the system, I'll be using this Deepcool PF500 power supply. I've also been using this quite a lot lately. These power supplies are extremely reliable, and their cables are pretty high quality as well. They're long, black, and they bend really well. All of these things are kinda necessary to make cable management easier and to make your system look better than average. It's honestly all that I could ask for from a budget power supply. And of course, the GPU. I chose this RTX 3060 because I got it from my neighbor about a week ago and I think it's gonna match the theme of the PC quite well. At this point you might have already noticed that we're going with a black and greyish theme because I've been building a lot of white PCs lately and I've been having this urge to build a black PC for the past month or two. Besides, I don't even have any white components right now, so I think I made the right choice to purchase this black case and just finally build this computer that I've been craving to build for over a month. Speaking of which, this case is actually pretty darn amazing. For $30 you not only get everything that an average case can provide, but you also get this side panel that is on a hinge which really elevates the aesthetics of the computer. It kinda makes it look a lot more luxurious, and I know that some of you guys will say that it's only MATX and it's not a full sized case, but let's be honest, do you really wanna have a giant computer sitting on your desk? Either way, I think I'm in love with this case because it's really comfortable to build in it and it actually sells really well. Let's not forget that, building PCs is great, but what's the point if you can't sell them? As some of you guys already know, I build PCs for a living, so I always have to draw a line between the quality, the price and the convenience that all of this hardware brings to me and the people that buy them. Anyhow, here's the finished product, tell me what you guys think about it. Would you build a computer like this? I know I definitely would. I actually wanted to migrate my computer over to this case, but unfortunately this is an MATX case and I have a full-sized ATX motherboard, so I'm kinda stuck with my old case for now. 
before I end the video, let's see what our scores are in Cinebench R23 and Unigine Superposition. Both of these softwares are free and I recommend them to anyone who is looking to test their hardware for free. In Cinebench R23 Multicore Stress Test, we're getting somewhere between 10,500 and 11,000 points. If you guys wanna compare these results to Intel CPUs, it's somewhere between i5-11400 and 12400F. I'd say that if you want this Ryzen 5 5500 for 1080p editing, it's perfectly capable and is able to do its job without any problems. Let's head over to Unigine Superposition. Nowadays, we have various models of GPUs. Some of them are overclocked from the factory and some of them run at a lower frequency, so depending on your GPU model, the scores are gonna vary a slight bit, but for the most part it's gonna be within the margin of error. We're running this stress test at 1080p resolution, both the shaders and the textures are set to high quality. Generally, this GPU gets around 11500 score on these settings, with roughly 300 score variance, which is basically what we got from this test. And in case you guys wanna test both the CPU and the GPU in gaming, go to Steam and download the demo version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's free, it's a really quick download, and you're allowed to use its built-in benchmarking tool on the demo version. Just go to Options, then Display and Graphics, and click Run Benchmark with the settings of your choice. Once the benchmark is finished, you're gonna get a graph like this that basically tells you how much of your CPU the game was using in comparison to the GPU. This is a well-balanced game and it should give you a rough idea of how your PC is gonna perform overall. On that note, let's wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.